Light looked down and saw darkness. I will go there, said Light. Peace looked down and saw more. I will go there, said Peace. Love looked down and saw war. I will go there, said Love. So he, the Lord of Light, the Prince of Peace, the King of Love, came down and crept in beside us. Good morning. I want to welcome all of our church family, all of our friends that are tuning in to this service this morning. Um, this is our last service for the year 2020. And all of us, I'm sure, are looking forward to next year. And as we continue to meet together, let's continue to keep God and Christ and the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Um, of course, you can see this sermon on Facebook or on our YouTube at Antioch UMC Greenville, Tennessee. And we're glad that you've joined us and continue joining us as you can. I want to go over something with you that I read this week and it touched me and I want to share it with each of you. And it came from uh, my daily reading, Jesus Calling. And God said, I am the gift that continuously gives bounteously with no strings attached. Absolutely nothing in heaven or on earth can stop me from loving you. My love for you is perfect, therefore it is not subject to variation. What does vary is your awareness of my loving presence. I am aching to hold you in my everlasting arms, to engulf you in my love, when you aren't feeling worthy and you're not feeling loved, please come to me. You wonder how long my love will last? Find your answer on the splintered cross. That's me you see up there. Your maker, your God. Nail stabbed and bleeding. That's your sin I am feeling and that's your death I am dying. That's your resurrection, I am living, and that's how much I love you. <coughs> and the people said, I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. Our opening hymn is, there's a song in the air. at the right hand 
of God the Father Almighty. From death he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Pray with me. Loving Father, you are and always will be the eternal God who has always existed, the creator and sustainer of all things, and the source of eternal life. We are thankful for the work of John as he prepared the way for Christ so that we may believe that Christ truly was and is the Son of God. How grateful we are that we have the opportunity to see the glory of your one and only Son. He is your ultimate revelation and the one who holds all creation together. As we pray this morning, our hearts are open and we give thanks to you. For we know with you we are special and unique, and without you we are nothing. Living without you would be abandoning the purpose for which you made us. As we go through the daily processes of just living in this complex world, we sometimes feel at times lost and forgotten. We must always remember that you are there, just waiting for us to talk with you. We only have to close our eyes or just look up and see the light of Jesus Christ. His light will bring a better understanding of all he has to offer for us. In his light, we see ourselves as we really are, sinners in need of a Savior. We know his light will guide us and help us to overcome our fears and misunderstandings. Christ, shine your light bright and remove the darkness of sin from our lives. Shine your light on Pastor Linda this morning as she brings her lesson to us. As we prepare for the new year, rekindle our flames so that we can start fresh and give our lives to Jesus. This fresh start is available to all who believe in Christ. As we take a few moments to pray silently, we pray for the weak, the sick, the lonely, the lost, our country and the world, and we give thanks to you, God, and bless our petitions. Let us pray solemnly. Father, hear what's in our hearts and rekindle our lives. Stay close and may your light and the light of Jesus Christ sustain us. These prayers and petitions we ask in the name of Christ who taught us to pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Our next song, Sing We Now Christmas, in the words, Sing We Now Christmas, Noel Sing We Hear. Hear our grateful praises to the babe so dear. Sing we Noel, the king is born Noel. Sing we now of Christmas, Sing we now know well.
As you prepare for the offering this morning, um, let's pray to God and give Him all thanks. God of hope and joy, the gifts we offer to you pale when our minds try to grasp all we have been given in this season. Hold us in our woundedness, hope in our despair, peace in our turmoil, and forgiveness in our rebellion. Help us embrace your extravagant generosity as we give ourselves to others. Bless the offering we receive to you through the work of our church. In our Savior's holy name we pray. Amen.
but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Once upon a time, there was a man named Jerry. Jerry was a builder. He had started off as a carpenter and learned to build homes and construct small office buildings. He lived in a small but growing town on the edge of a big city, so there was always a lot of work to be done. He gained a reputation as the best in his field. He was honest, hardworking, didn't rip people off, and did a high-quality job. Jerry made a lot of money in his business. He was able to purchase 10 acres of land and built himself a mansion of a house for himself and his six children. People used to drive by just to look at what a fabulous house it was. Jerry taught all of his children to be builders. They all followed in his footsteps and eventually took over the thriving family business. Jerry built homes for all of his sons because he loved them so much. But at the age of 70, Jerry was starting to slow down. He had six children, 12 grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. The mansion was too much for him to keep up. Jerry had, Jerry had always dreamed of retiring up north in the woods where he could be close to nature. So he found a little house he could keep up a thousand miles to the north. He loved his family so much, but he felt they needed to be on their own without him always telling them what to do. So with tears in his eyes, he moved away. Every week he would write to a different child or grandchild, but he never heard back. He assumed their business was booming and that they had been too busy to write. After six months had passed, he started writing, let me know when you want me to come visit. I would love to see you again. But he never heard back. He knew they were busy. But maybe they didn't want him around anymore. Maybe they preferred life without him. He didn't want to force himself on his children, grandchildren, or his great-grandchildren, so he just stayed away. But his love for his family never changed. Five years passed when one day he finally got a letter in the mail. It was an invitation to an annual family Christmas reunion. It said December 24th, 7 o'clock sharp. He was so excited. He loved his family so much. And now he was invited back to his own home again. He could hardly wait. He spent the next two weeks buying as many Christmas presents as he thought he could squeeze into his car. But for 30 people, it is no small test. But he didn't want to leave anybody out. Finally, he got in his car to begin the thousand-mile drive. It took him two full days of driving. When he drove up to the mansion where he used to live, he saw cars in the driveway and the lights in the house. He knew it was worth it. He almost started to cry as he walked up to the front door. He knocked ever so politely, and his son came to the door. He shouted, my sons, 
and threw his arms around him. But his son pulled back. He said, who are you? He said, I am your father. Don't you recognize me? The son said, my father left here five years ago. We haven't heard from him since. Who are you? I'm your father, he said. Don't you even remember what your father looks like? His son said, I don't recognize you. I didn't invite you to come. I think you should leave. Jerry was speechless. He didn't know what to say. The entryway of the house was filling with people all staring at him like he was a stranger in his own home. Again he said, but I am your father. I wrote you all those letters. For five years I have written to every one of you. Didn't you get them? One son said, we never got any letters from our father. But every year, imposters have stopped by, claiming to be our father, trying to get some of our money. I think you're just another imposter. You should leave. Just then, the five and seven and nine-year-old great-grandchildren rushed into the entryway yelling, it's great-grandpa, it's great-grandpa, you came, you came. His eyes filled with tears as they jumped into his arms. How good it felt to be welcomed. But just as quickly as they had jumped into his arms, their parents pulled them back. He is not great-grandpa. Great-grandpa doesn't exist anymore. He is an imposter. Sadly, he stepped back to the door. He turned and looked at them and said, My own family, my own home, and I am not welcome. One son said, this is not your family, this is not your home. He said, but I just drove a thousand miles in three days to share my love with you. I have a whole car full of gifts for you. Don't you want them? The great-grandchildren were pulling on their parents' sleeves, saying, yes, but the parents were shaking their heads, no. If we accept his gifts, we will owe him something. We will be indebted to him, and he will want something from us. He said, I only want to give to you and to enjoy your presence. Nobody said anything. So he turned around and walked out to his car. He said to himself, how can this be? I don't understand what has happened to them. But how can I leave? I love these people. I cannot leave. I have to stay. I have to get them to love me. He looked up at the roof of his car and he said, Lord, how? How can I get my own family to receive me? There was silence. But as he looked down at the floor of his car, he saw his Bible that he read faithfully every day. He picked it up and he opened it to Luke chapter 2 where he had been reading the Christmas story. He read it again. This time the words seemed to jump off the page at him where it said of Mary and Joseph, there was no room for them in the inn. It didn't say there was no room in the inn. It said there was no room for them in the inn. Now that was true of Jerry. He closed his Bible, and he said, But God, I have it worse than Mary and Joseph. They were not welcomed by strangers. I am not welcome in my own home, my own family. He opened his Bible, this time to John 1, where John wrote about Jesus coming into the world at Christmas time. Again, 
the words seemed to leap off the page at him as he read, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. He thought, how many times have I read that and I never realized what it said. Verse 11 is my own children. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. My own children do not want me in my own house. The house I built with my own hands on the land I purchased with my own money. This is what Jesus went through. I wonder how many other people are not welcome in their own homes at Christmas time. They are experiencing what Jesus did. He thought verse 10 describes my grandchildren. The world did not recognize him. Verse 5 says the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. He thought, my grandchildren didn't really reject me. They just didn't recognize me. They didn't seem to understand. They were not angry like my children were. They were just confused. I wonder how many people in the world are confused about Jesus at Christmas time. They just don't understand. Or maybe nobody's ever told them. But then he smiled. He said, verse 12 describes my great-grandchildren. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God. He said, my great-grandchildren may only be five or seven or nine years old, but they are the wisest people in that house. As soon as they saw me, they recognized me. They knew the sound of my voice. Somehow, they knew what I would be like. They are my true children. They want my gifts and my love. They are trusting and open. Just like all those who have received Jesus into their hearts, their homes, their lives. He thought, maybe Jesus is like a Christmas gift. God wraps him up, puts our name on the box, and leaves it under the tree for us. It is already ours, but it is not ours yet. The gift of Jesus doesn't do us any good until we receive it and open it and enjoy it to its fullest. The good news of Christmas is only good if you receive it. Well, that night, Jerry slept in his car in the driveway of the mansion. The next morning was Christmas morning and he wanted to give his gifts to his children. As usual, the youngest ones woke up first. They quietly snuck downstairs and looked at the tree and all the presents under it. They were excited until they looked out the window and saw the old man sleeping in his car. The nine-year-old said, I know that's my great-grandpa and I am going out to wish him a Merry Christmas. So all the great-grandchildren quietly put on their boots and hats and gloves and coats and walked out in the snow to the car. 
About an hour later, the parents were awakened by the sound of laughter. They looked out their windows, and there was the old man giving his entire carload of gifts to the children. Paper was strewn all over the yard. They were laughing and singing and playing and building a snowman. Their children had never been happier. They rushed outside and they told the old man, you really ought to go now. The children all cried, why, why? Why does great-grandpa have to leave? They said, he is not your great-grandpa. He must leave now. Funny thing was, the old man wasn't angry. He wasn't upset. He was sad, but not angry. He gathered all the little children around, and he whispered to them, you have given me the best Christmas I have ever had in my whole life. Nothing and nobody can ever take that away from me. Don't let anybody take it away from you. You need to learn not to let other people spoil your Christmas. They don't believe in me. But you know the truth. You are my believers. I am going to go away, but only for a while. One day I will return for you. I want you to be ready, because when I come back, the gifts that I bring for you and anyone else who believes in me will be so wonderful, I can't even begin to describe them. Remember the joy you feel right now now. Remember this love that we share. When I return for you, our joy and our love will be ten times this great. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him Yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of sending forth, because he lives. <laughs>
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.